Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. You're definitely in for a treat because I'm going to be reviewing a sci-fi cyberpunk action film filled with CGI and, and all of this other stuff that actually came out on Valentine's Day weekend, February 14th. And so far so good, it's becoming the third highest grossing film of the year. Through its 170 million budgets, it's actually making 350 million. Keep this up, and I think we're going to get a sequel that follows. It's simply called Alita Battle Angel, which is based on the manga by Yukido Kishiro, which the title was called Gum or Gumbu. For short, as it's pronounced in Japan, which also uh, had an OVA series, a two episode OVA called Battle Angel Alita. Switch a rule here. <laughs> I was actually really looking forward to this uh, ever since I saw the trailer and actually heard about this because uh, James Cameron, who's also the executive producer and wrote the screenplay as well wanted to come up with uh, an adaptation of a very popular series uh, from the 90s. So just to give it uh, a unique flavor to it. Because so far we've been getting some anime adaptations of films like Ghost in the Shell from 2017, uh, Speed Racer from 2008, and of course uh, Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, go figure. So, Either way, my hopes though that this movie is going to be a lot better than Dragon Ball Evolution, for sure. And hoping that this will turn out to be the best adaptation and definitely faithful to them through the story. So hopefully this will follow a series. Because it looks to me like it's definitely going to follow it there. Now, Fox had some scheduling conflicts uh, at the time, ever since they released the first trailer. They were supposed to be releasing it uh, during the summer of last year, July to be exact. But unfortunately, I guess due to um, the Disney-Fox deal that was going around, and, or, and they're trying to switch around with other films to, to keep that in mind, or the fact that they don't want to compete against other summer films like the superhero films and all that, that they decided to postpone to uh, a Christmas release, but then they postponed the dots, I mean, even with the second trailer joining in, and they just replaced it with Once Upon a Deadpool, you know, totally unnecessary, but they had to go there, and decided to give it a Valentine's Day release, which I was kind of afraid because I had a feeling it was going to become a flop. I mean, that's what happened with uh, Ghost in the Shell in 2017, you know, because of the criticism it's gotten with the whole whitewashing thing, um, which I, I don't understand. I really don't. I thought Scarlett Johansson played her perfectly as Major Killian. I guess, yes, it did have some flaws, but that's okay, you know, it didn't hurt the movie. I just think people are really missing out these days. It takes a break from all these uh, superhero films and all these other ones and all these dramas that we get. So we needed something. So I'm just hoping that Alita Battle Angel doesn't suffer that problem. And what do you know, it hasn't. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's going to make us tons of money enough to, to provide uh, more sequels and everything that goes around because uh, I really want to see more of Alita's adventures, you know, where she, you know, where, you know, she started out um, as a, a female cyborg, you know, who was actually a warrior, and then, and eventually, she winds up getting built by um, a doctor, hoping that she'll come back to life, even if she has some memory issues, but it's still intact on the brain. Plus, she gets to kick ass, too. I mean, she's she's a very good fighter. <laughs> so that's what I was expecting. I saw the movie in 2D uh, yesterday at the theater, and 
I was really impressed. I mean, I, I wasn't bored. The story just kept on going. I mean, we get to see more to the story than what meets the eye, focusing on the main character, Alita, you know, going for her adventures. She meets a guy named Hugo, who eventually falls in love with her, even begins to teach her all the ropes and everything. We also have the scientist's ex-wife, um, you know, Dr. Chiron, and then we have the villain named Vector. And we have all these other characters joining in, like all these bounty hunters and, and other uh, warriors here and there, all cyborgs. And wow. <laughs> It's just really something. So, and I gotta say, this um, this would definitely be truly faithful uh, to the the source material. Even though, yes, I understand it could have some issues, but that's okay because it didn't bother me. I mean, this is written by James Cameron, who's also the executive producer behind the film. You know, after his uh, success with Avatar. You know, he's trying his best to come up with something new. And I know he's looking forward to working on, which they already have, uh, a sequel to Avatar. And Robert Rodriguez uh, joined in to direct, which I think originally uh, James Cameron was going to offer Guillermo del Toro to do this, but he dropped out and went on to do uh, The Shape of Water and other stuff. So Robert Rodriguez stepped in and hoping this will definitely do good for his career since after all he's been known for doing the, all the El Marachi films like like the Desperado and, and even the Once Upon a Time in Mexico and Sin City and all that so this will be his um, true spirit here so let's do the review stars Rosa Salazar and best known for doing films such as uh, The Divergent, Maze Runner, and, and I think she went on to do TV series like Parenthood and, and American Horror Story, you know, one of the uh, anthologies. Um, this is definitely uh, her best performance to date. Uh, Christoph Waltz uh, from Inglorious Bastards, as well as The Green Hornet. And even the film, also directed by Quentin Tarantino, who did *The Glorious Bastards*, um, uh, *Yango on Chain*. Keenan Johnson, Marshala Ali, who just recently did the film uh, *Spider-Man: Into the Spider-Verse*. Jennifer Connelly, yes, from *Labyrinth*, among many others. Ed Skirwin, yes, from Deadpool, he played the, the villain Ajax. His, also, his real name is Francis. <laughs> it's great to see him again. Uh, Jackie O'Haley, you know, who's been in a lot of films, including uh, Watchmen. Uh, George Lindbergh Jr., Lena Condor, Eliza Gonzalez from Baby Driver. Uh, Jeff Fahey, yes, from The Lawnmower Man, Body Parts, and even Machete, that was also directed by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, Wick Yoon, uh, Derek Mears, and Casper Ben Dean from Starship Troopers, as well as uh, Sleepy Hollow. Which also had some uncredited roles uh, by Eric Norton. Michelle Rodriguez and Jai Courtney. Yes, Jai Courtney's in this. It's written by James Cameron, along with Lata Kalogridis, who wrote the screenplay for Shutter Island. Great movie, by the way. Again, based on the manga by Yokito Kishiro. And it's directed by Robert Rodriguez, who gave us, once again, Machete, Sin City, the El Marachi trilogy and a lot more. <laughs> yes, even the Spy Kids films. The movie began set in a futuristic city known as Iron City in 2563 
during the catastrophic war known as the Fall, we meet a cyborg scientist named Dr. Dyson Idol, played by Christoph Waltz, who is scouting around the junkyard metropolis only to find a disembodied female cyborg with a fully intact human brain. So then he attached a cyborg body to the brain who does not have any recollections of her past and names her Alita, who's played by Rosa Zalazar. It's named her after his deceased daughter, who's a real bound girl, who was actually killed by one of the, um, the cyborgs. Anyway, uh, once um, Alita was functioned, you know, she got up uh, through the bedroom. She begins to try out all the clothes and begin to find out what she looks like, you know, with all the parts together. Yeah. So she's beginning to learn. Um, also, um, Ido even has a partner to join in, who's black. He begins to teach her how to uh, how to taste, how to uh, move around, and begin to remember all of her memories that she has. But unfortunately, it was all blank, so she's having trouble uh, following. But yes, uh, she actually tried out an orange, which <laughs> she forgot to peel it. She just eats it uh, w with the skin peel. <laughs> but she's getting there. And also, she even gets to cry. You know, her tears started to fall down on her cheek. Because she has those huge eyes right there. Yeah. Just like how an anime girl would look like, you know, when they get huge eyes. It's all brown, too. So, she looks incredibly uh, stunning. Um, anyway, um, as it follows, Alita meets her new friend named Hugo, played by Keenan Johnson, who dreams of moving to a wealthy sky city called Zalem, which actually is all, all the way on top. It's like a, another futuristic city, uh, which down at the bottom is where it lands uh, through. And Hugo also introduced her to a competitive sport called motorball. It's like rollerball. You know, the rolling skating the Battle Royale race, yeah, where the cyborgs uh, fight to the death. Then she discovers that Ido is a hunter warrior, a bounty hunter. So that's why uh, he's been going out at night. But he also was uh, trying to tell Alita not to go at night because it's dangerous. And so that particular night, uh, she follows him and encounters three cyborg assassins, all which are led by Ben Wishka, that's played by Jackie Earl Haley. So when Ido was injured, that's when Alita came to the rescue and starts to instantly attack the cyborgs, and it was just amazing when, he, when she had started to do all that. As to killing two of them, only to damage uh, Wishka, who actually retreats underground, you know, takes down his arm. So despite of that, uh, Alita discovers her skill in the Asian martial arts known as Panzer Kunz. And that's when Ido discovers her by her becoming a hunter warrior because she actually started out uh, as a, a space warrior by her code name 99. But she was working uh, by her partner um, named Gelda, who's played by uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Yes, and she's a cyborg warrior from Mars, who actually trains Alita how to fight. And that's what there was going on uh, during the battle. So hoping that she'll definitely become a warrior, Ido decided to uh, have a talk with her, telling her not to. Uh, not to fight because you know it will be dangerous and not only that all of her body parts will be missing and and he's afraid that he might lose her so so because of that Alita decided to register herself as a hunter warrior 
where then she and Hugo decided to go to a bar called Kansas to ask all the other hunter warriors uh, to help her take down um, Urwishka. And yes, one of the bounty hunters is led by uh, Zapon, who's played by Ed Skirin. We also got Matigue, who's played by Jeff Fahey, and we have all these other ones uh, following them. We also meet Ido's um, uh, uh, ex-wife, Dr. Charon, who's played by Jennifer Connelly, who's a master cyborg engineer, who sadly went on to work with uh, a villain named Vector, who's played by Mashala Ali who's the interpreter who actually rigs all the multiple combat machines so so what they do was uh, which leads a secret behind all this was that Hugo along with his friends or in disguise you know just ripping apart all the uh, the sideboard players um, by stripping out all their parts you know like their legs their arms and be able to use them for for other parts for cyborgs and they were probably responsible for actually killing the, all the other people out there, even humans. So that's what led to the, the secrets behind all that. Um, so back to the bar, that's when the Alita started to have a huge fight, you know, beating the shit out of all the other uh, bounty hunters out there until uh, Ido uh, came along. You know, he actually brought in his trusty uh, mallet to actually, to actually uh, hunt down all, all these guys. So then the, that's where she starts to have the fight uh, between the, her, her and Wishka. And by going battle underground and all that. So actually beats the shit out of him, but it just lets the bigger fights. Also, Alita suddenly went straight into the ship, where she once was, and, and she begins to find another suit. So that way, hopefully, she'll be able to wear it pretty soon if, if something happens to her body. And what do you know, um, that's when Twin Ido founds out that, uh, yes, uh, this the steel suit can actually put her together and she can actually restore her body, you know, through her brain, and she'll become more stronger than ever before. And yet she gets to move faster than ever. Alita suddenly falls in love with Hugo, which even Hugo himself falls in love with her. And and even Alita decided to enter the motorball tryout race, meaning to send Hugo to Solom. But then that's where we begin to see what, what happens next when when um, this whole thing turns out to be a setup because now they know that all the hunter warriors and, and all the other um, cyborgs are going to end up killing her you know, during the race and it was just amazing meanwhile uh, Hugo was in trouble that's being chased down by uh, Zeppon and that's what led to all the secrets behind him and, everything going around. But it was up to Alita to save him, as well as stopping all the other cyborgs, you know, from going after her, because she's very strong. And it was even up to um, Ido to actually uh, find out if she's going to be alright. And, and that's when the story started to go on, you know, when after what just happened to Hugo, um, trying to find a way to restore him back. That's when um, Alita decided to go up against Victor and all the rest to stop him. And you know, before we get into a character known as Nova, who's actually controlling Victor, using him as his puppet. Not to mention the, you know, Dr. Charon had quit just to move on and tries to help her. All things to settle. Um, so that's where the story goes, um, and I gotta say, I really, I really love this movie 
so far so good. In fact, this is actually my favorite film of the year. Um, for this year alone. Um, I had to say, I was really, really impressed by the way the visual effects look and definitely has the feel and the magic of the manga that follows. Um, I definitely love the performances of Rosa Salazar as Alita. I mean, she was really strong. I mean, she really uh, was very cute. You know, I, I love her facial expressions she makes, especially with those huge eyes that she has. That's all brown. But she gets the kick ass. I mean, I swear, she was. She actually learns all those moves as quickly as possible. I mean, it, it takes some time, though. But, but once she begins to remember her past, you know, through all these cyborgs, that she actually got to kick ass and save um, Ido's life. Yeah, because he was working as a hunter warrior, considering that he's a scientist. Because he was he was ruined it too. Um, I love that moment where she took down those two cyborgs. You know, actually kicks kicks them and stumps their face and take down all their parts and everything. You know, doing all these high kick moves and the punches and all that. I I even love the moment uh, just when we we're getting into the flashback. Uh, we, we get to see her do a, a, a two and a half somersault and, and a high kick to uh, Bushwishka, you know, taking down his arm. And she, and she says, she does that, hi yeah, And it goes directly into her eye. And that's where we saw the flashback between her and, and Gilda. You know, how uh, she was teaching her how to train and everything and how she remembers. Oh, that was amazing. And there there's even more scenes of her, you know, you know, fighting all these other cyborgs and even taking down at the bar and eat, and of course the motorball scenes all the way. I mean it was just really impressive. A lot of great action sequences all the way around. Um, I love the visual effects. Yes, it's done by CGI, but it's also motion capture that uh, really captures the characters. I mean, they all had to wear their suits to be able to have all these movements, especially Rosa, you know, having to wear the suit and wear all these dots in her face. And she does all of her movements here and there. Uh, also, um, Alita was very flexible, too. And, and she actually can do all these uh, moves, and she can stretch, and do all that. Um, they actually use a, a Circus de Soleil a performer to do all these acrobatic moves uh, for Lita. Meanwhile she's just, <laughs> from what I heard, uh, Rosa actually started to have some lunch before she wants to get into character again. You know, she even gets to like try out a chocolate and gets a ride on on all the other uh, capture movements here and there. So <laughs> Yeah, and, and she said her favorite food is chocolate. Uh, the other cast, um, I thought Keenan Johnson, uh, who's uh, who played Hugo, uh, was very good. Um, sort of remind me a little bit like uh, for his facial expressions, he started to look a little bit like Fred Savage there. And I thought, man, is that Fred Savage? <laughs> but it's not him. Uh, so he's very good. Uh, He's a new actor, so I think he's going to do well for other, other stuff he will in the future. Um, but he's a great love interest to Alita, and it really shows, and it's just sad about what happened to him. Uh, Christoph Waltz, uh, very good as um, Dr. Dyson Ido. I mean, it's great to see that he actually plays not only a scientist, but also a hunter-warrior himself. So, really has that awesome... Uh, mallet that he has where he can take down all these cyborgs. It's amazing. He does that at night. Um, and then you got uh, Jennifer Conley playing Dr. Uh, Cher Cherwin, Idol's ex-wife, and she's very good. I mean, she's she's a cyborg engineer. We also learned that she uh, she has that, uh, that diamond on her forehead because she was once with uh, Ido and explains the secrets behind them. 
because they used to work together, seeing that they had a daughter of their own, named, also named Alita. Um, Excarin, Asapa, yes, um, it was great to see him too, uh, playing a cyborg body hunter, I mean, it sort of echoes uh, his uh, Ajax character in Deadpool, so he's pretty much playing that particular role, but but he does have a vendetta against uh, Alita, as well as the rest. But that's how he is. Jackie O'Haley is very good as Grishka, the, the a cyborg who's huge. He's one of the villains too, and, and then you got other um, you got other assassins and all all the way around. Like you got Isa Gonzalez playing a role. You got Mick Teague and. As a hunter warrior who has a pack of cyborg and robotic dogs, you know, that's attacking Grishka and all the rest of the others. Or just Grishka. Oh, man. I know, I'm just going on and on. Um, the story wasn't that bad at all. Um, it's trying to become more faithful to the adaptation of how it goes, so it, it follows us straight. It goes directly through the pages of of all the volumes that that puts together, and I love that. So I could definitely see what James Cameron is trying to do when he adapts this uh, with the help of uh, Lada Kahlo Guides, uh, the writer. But I know critics are saying that the story is very muddled, the the whole screenplay. And I don't know. See, I, I don't. That's another reason not to agree with critics. Back to that. Um, I love the the shots of the futuristic city, you know, between the Iron City and the Zalem. It just looks very stunning. Definitely looks as futuristic as it's supposed to look. Um, they definitely did a great job, you know, trying to capture the character of Alita, you know. With Again, those huge eyes and everything, trying to look almost like an anime character. I mean, because it even shows that, yes, she does have huge eyes. And I also love how she actually takes a bit of blood and starts to create that marks on her, on the sides of her cheek. You know, and just like how they, how warriors, you know, fight so they stand by and they'll be able to, you know, battle. She also has the, the sword, too, um, that's actually from uh, Sapon. That was a nice sword. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it has a wonderful score by Tom Hockenborg, and cinematography was well well done by Bill Pope. Oh, man. I would love to see this movie again and again. I just never get tired of it. It just goes on and on, and it wasn't boring at all. It was just fun. I mean, I just love the moves that Alita does. I love all the action sequences, the visual effects, the characters that we got. Yes, I even love the scene where you know she was trying out the motorball with, with Hugo and his friends, and I thought that was really fun. She had trouble at first, but then she got into it, and that's how it led to. Um, and all this other stuff that the story goes. And, oh, man. I, I, would, I would talk forever over this. Despite of having a sad ending, as well as uh, a sequel bait cliffhanging ending, which doesn't bother me at all, so I can live with that. Because now we're beginning to follow what's going to happen next uh, with the story. It's still totally awesome, on its own right. Yeah, I'm going to keep repeating myself, but I just love the character of Lita. She's very strong, flexible. She definitely knows how to do all of her fighting action moves. All these high kicks, and all of that. And I just, oh my god. This was really something. And plus, she's very strong, too. I mean, that, yes... <laughs> That sometimes, yeah, even if Hugo comes to the rescue in that one scene, even though she did found a puppy, uh, <laughs> yeah, he ex she actually uh, carries him too for a while, hoping that she'll be safe. Um, 
But yeah, he even felt uh, uh, Alita's energy saying, wow, you're so strong. <laughs> I just love this. So yeah, it's a dead giveaway, but that's all right. Um, uh, but yes, once again, all the other actors, uh, even Michelle Ali was very good too. Can't wait to see what happens next when they do a sequel. I mean, so far so good. It's becoming a huge hit at the box office, making $350 million worldwide. So I hope it continues to make more as it hits. And, and uh, definitely check this movie out. I mean, see it uh, whatever format it is, either in 3D or 2D, even at the IMAX, too. So I think you'll have a wonderful time. Um, in theaters, because that's another reason why, you know, I, I love to go out and, and watch something good for a change without feeling bored. So, but anyway, and I hope that when the Blu-ray comes, because I'm really looking forward to picking this up, and I really would love to, so I can watch it again and again and again. Um, I hope it gets a lot of features, tons of features. Maybe gets. Uh, a, uh, an exclusive to whatever store it carries, like maybe Target might have an exclusive for this. So I just can't wait uh, when it comes out later on. But so far so good. Um, I love it. I can't wait to see it again and again. You'll have fun. So anyway, that's Alita Battle Angel and I give it five stars. Without a doubt. <laughs> I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.